You know, there's a mentality, a spirit mentality that you must cultivate. And it's important. You've got to cultivate a spirit mentality. And that's what we're talking about. Being spiritually minded. A spirit mentality. There is a, a saint's mentality. And there's a spirit mentality. Glory to God. See, those who came out of Egypt with Moses were very different from those who came out of Egypt and were in Joshua's group. They were the ones that got into the promised land. Those who came out with Moses didn't get in. Those in his generation didn't get in. Why? The Bible says they could not enter because of unbelief. It was hard to move them. They always backslid in their hearts. They always went back in their hearts to Egypt. Or it used to be better in those days. It used to be better. Do you ever feel it used to be better? <laughs> it used to be better in those days. Have you, have you heard people speak? When they talk about the government, they say, in those days. Yet the Bible says, do not desire the past days. Don't you say that they are better than these days. That's what the Bible says. But they don't hear it. Oh, in those days, you know, in those days. Always going back in their minds to Egypt. <laughs> the onions and the garlics. In those days. You see, in those days. Some people even say God used to move swiftly in those days. <laughs> he doesn't move anymore. How do you want him to move? He moves by you. When you move, God moves. All right. Okay. You're still here? Okay. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the senses mind the things of the senses. And it says, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit. Spiritually minded people spend time on the things that enhance the growth of their spirit. Fleshly minded people spend time on things that enhance the growth of their senses. Hallelujah. What kind of books do you buy? Some of you, from work, you chatter all the newspapers in town. <laughs> You're going to read them at home. You just chatter all of them. Because you don't want to be bored at home. Just chatter all the newspapers. Look at you. All the magazines you can get in town. You just pack them. You're going home. All the home videos you can get. You just pack them. And take them home. One after the other. You're there. Have you read your Bible today? No, I'll read it later. You want to reserve reading of the Bible to when you're falling asleep. That's when you want to read it. In the night. And you deceive others by saying that you can really concentrate when others are sleeping. <laughs> but that is when you sleep. As soon as they are sleeping, you go... <laughs> you see, you, you mind the things of the flesh. Your TV is on 24 hours. What do you look for? Look at it. It's here. See it. For they that are after the flesh, mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. How many Christian tapes do you have? Some of you buy them, but you don't listen to them. You just keep chattering them. You just keep buying them. Buying them. But you never have time. You have lots of videos. You haven't watched one yet. Christian videos and Christian books. You have a beautiful library. But you, you don't use it. You don't pass your exam because, you, buy, you, because you, you have the book. You have to read it. Is that correct? You can look at the books and say, I have that one. I have that one. I have that one. You still fail. Praise the Lord. All right, now come to this. Verse 6 is too touching. It is so powerful. Oh, oh. For to be carnally minded is death. Look at it. We, we were just looking at those who were carnally minded a moment ago. It seemed like what they were doing wasn't really bad after. It wasn't really serious. They were just different from those who were spiritually minded. They were just different. Somebody says, I'm a Christian, but not a very serious one. 
Huh? Do you know what? Do you know where you are? You are a Christian, but not a serious one. Let me show you what it is not to be a serious Christian. Turn to your Bible again. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Don't forget it. Memory verse. <laughs> Say it with me. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded, minded is dead. dead. But to be spiritually minded <laughs> is life and peace. Okay, cover your Bible now. Don't close it fully. Look at me. Say Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. For to be carnally minded, minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and peace. Say it, it is there now. It is there now. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. To be carnally minded is death, he says. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want life? You want peace? You want to enjoy life? Then be spiritually minded. Then be spiritually minded. The next one, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject... To the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, it's not easy to understand who's in the flesh or who's in the spirit until you first of all know what it is to be in the spirit. In other words, for yourself. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know who the Christian is. What does God expect the Christian to be? Who is he? The different classes. You've got the babe in Christ. And the Bible says the babe is carnally minded. The babe is carnal. He doesn't understand spiritual things. And the Bible says he's a babe because he does not understand the doctrine of righteousness. He doesn't know what righteousness is. He is not skilled in the doctrine of righteousness. He's a babe. That's a babe. He doesn't understand righteousness. In the Old Testament, you could only be righteous on the basis of the law. Is that right? To be righteous, you had to obey all the law. Then you'd be a righteous man. But did you know there was life before the law? How did men become righteous before the law? Abraham lived before the law. Yet the Bible says that righteousness was set to his account. Righteousness was reckoned to him. How? Why? Because he believed God. The Bible says Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. In other words, he believed God and God called him righteous. What about all the wrong things Abraham did? God didn't think about them. He just called a man righteous. There was no law. He says, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He was called a friend of God. Abraham the righteous. Abraham the righteous. Then the law came. What does Paul tell us? Was the reason for the law? It was added because of transgressions. The Bible says the law was added because of transgressions. Meaning that the law was not a part of the system. In other words, it came in at a time for a reason. One, it was added because of transgressions. Two, it was the schoolmaster. You remember that? Galatians chapter 4. The schoolmaster to take them unto Christ. In other words, now you remember what I told you the schoolmaster was. He wasn't really a teacher. He was the one, the Mr. Senior Servant that was sent to take the school boys to school. And to watch over them while they played. That was the one translated schoolmaster. 
But it says, now that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, what am I showing you? Look at it. Before the law, I said, life, there was life. And Abraham, Abraham was counted righteous by God before the law came. I said, so, so why did the law come? He says, it was added. It was added because of transgressions until the seed should come to whom the promises were made. Galatians. See the way you're looking at me now. <laughs> so let me take you to Galatians. Woohoo! Glory to God. Chapter 3, verse 19. You see it there. Are you there? Read verse 19. Want to go? Good. You see that? He says, Why do you serve the law? Paul's asking them. He says, Why didn't you serve the law? He said the law was added because of transgressions. It was not always there. It came at a certain point in history. Life was already going on. Righteousness could already be given. After it was given to Abraham. And he lived before the law. The law was added because of transgressions until the seed should come. And the seed that he was talking about was Christ. Look at verse 16. Read it to me. And I said, which is Christ. So, until the seed should come, to whom the promises were made. And you know, we are of the generation of Jesus Christ. We belong, you see, we are, we are joint heirs with Him. 